way that you do this is you look at the number of rows which go this way horizontally and the number of columns which go vertically. So this is a one row, two columns. So I'm going to write one by two right below it. This one here is a one, two row, okay, by two column. And the key here in order to uh, multiply these two matrices, you want to make sure that the inner dimensions match. So here they do match, they're the same. And what we end up with is a matrix that has these outer dimensions, one row, two columns. So I'm going to draw the what they call the resultant matrix or the final matrix that has a, a one row, which is this way, and two columns, which is this way. So I like to write that final matrix. Now it's always rows by columns, rows by columns, rows by columns forever and ever. Okay, so if you can remember that, you got it. So what we have here is we have, this is the element that's in the first row, first column, okay? So what we do is we take the first row times the first column. So I'm just gonna circle this. We take the first row times the first column. Now what you wanna do is you wanna take the first element in this row times the first element in this column. So one times three is three plus second element in the row times the second element in the column, two times zero is zero, and then we add those together, and I'm just gonna write it down here, that's three, okay? This one here is in the first row, second column, so that tells us what to do. We take the first row times the second column, right here. So I take one times negative one, which is negative one, plus two times two, which is four, and we add those together, and we get three. So this just happened to work out to be the same two numbers, three and three, but uh, that's just a coincidence. Okay, so let's go to another example, example number two. So what do you think the dimensions are of these two matrices? Well, let's see, this one has how many rows? Two rows, okay, those are horizontal. One, two, three columns, columns like uh, Roman columns, you know, columns in a, of a building, right? This one has one, two, three rows by two columns, so three by two. Notice that these inner dimensions match so we're good, and then we're gonna end up with a matrix that has the outer dimensions, it's gonna be a two by two. So I like to draw the resultant matrix, two rows, two columns, that's a square matrix. Now, a lot of times, uh, books and teachers and students will ask, what happens if I switch the matrices? Well, normally multiplication is commutative, like if you change five times three, three times five, it doesn't matter the order, you multiply them together, you get the same answer, 15. But with matrices, when you switch the order, sometimes you're not even able to multiply the matrices together because the inner dimensions no longer match. Sometimes they do match, but you're gonna get a different matrix. So they're not necessarily gonna be the same. So with matrices, we say that multiplication is not commutative. So again, the key is to write the number of rows by columns, rows by columns. Make sure the inner dimensions, they're the same. You end up with a matrix that has the outer dimensions here. Now I like to work backwards, okay? A lot of teachers teach us a little bit differently, but I, I think this is easier. Ask yourself, let's just say we do this one over here. What position is this in? It's in the second row, second column. See how I always do rows first and columns second, rows by columns forever and ever, right? So I take the second row times the second column, and then I, what I do in my mind, just to show you my technique, is I take this row like this, I rotate it, so that the numbers are matching up with one another, the ones that are next to each other. I multiply those together and then I add them. But you can think of it as the first element in the row times the first element in the column, second, second, third, third. So you're multiplying those. So let's do that. Three times four is 12. Now a lot of people are good at writing, memorizing this. So three times four is 12. Zero times two is zero. Negative one times one is negative one. So what did I say? 12 plus zero plus negative one, which is 11. But you don't have to do that. You can maybe do your work on the side and then put your final answer there. So let's do, uh, let's maybe do this one here next. You can do it in any order. This is the second row, first column. Second row, first column. So I'm going to take the second row by the first column. So that's three plus zero plus negative five. That's negative two. You don't have to do it in your head. Let's say we want to do this one here. This is the first row, first column. So first row, first column. So that's two times one, which is two. 1 times 0, which is 0, 0 times 5, which is 0, add all those together, I get 2. And then the last one here is in what position? First row, second column. So we take the first row by the second column, 2 times 4 is 8, 1 times 2 is 2, 0 times 1 is 0, we add those together, we get 10, you've got your final or your